Okay, that's enough about zeroing up the machine, except that what we've now got to do is to set this over the center line of the axis. Now, as you can see here, we've got two choices. We could run it on this one, but it doesn't look very stable on there. It makes more sense to run it over on this one. But even so, are we likely to get any sort of slippage? This is the slippage that I was talking about. So we have two problems that we need to work with and I think I'll use this piece to start with as my a test piece and we'll set this up to approximately the center line. Check we've got our focus height approximately correct. We will just do a track test on it. I can do a frame. Looks as though it's going to overlap with this one. And we could also wind it around a bit as well. Let's try it one more time, frame. And there we are, we're steering clear of anything else that we've done before. Run, but we're not actually ready to run at the moment because we need to turn the laser on, which we've now done. And we'll turn some air on. There's my air assist. So we'll now run the program and see what happens. fairly successful. We just need to probably touch these and they will just fall out. A little bit sensitive there, look you see. So uh, we could do with stretching the letters because they are not correct. So that one's a bit, yeah, the H is a bit fragile in the center there so that's not very successful, we need to look at the font. But anyway, essentially it works. So now what I'm going to do is to have a quick check, see what dimension we've created around here. So between these two lines here, we've got 162 millimeters, and we plan to have 150. So at the moment it's 150 to 162 is the ratio. We'll talk about how you can change the program to get that accurate. And as you can see inside there, it's nice and clean inside, it's not burnt. In essence, that's all there is to rotary engraving. Well, although we could go back and change the font and various other things to make this into a much better job, um, that's not the purpose of these sessions. The purpose of these sessions is to show you how to get the machine to work. It's down to you and your time to refine the results. We need to go back to RD Works to see how we might do that. Right, well here we are back in our favourite playground um, where it says File. One of the things in this list is something called Vendor Settings. To get into here you need a password because it's R, D and then four eights. One, two, three, four. All I'll say to you is this is not the way that I would go about doing it, but it is the way that various people on the internet, including some manufacturers, recommend that you go and change the relationship between, and let's take a look here, it's something called, if we say motor, um, X or Y, and we're going to be using Y. You can come in here with this three dot button and it tells you that we've got a graph length 
of 100 millimetres. In our particular instance it was 150 millimetres and then we measured it to 162 and we could reset this but the problem is you'd have to reset this for every single diameter that you want to do engrave because this effectively is a relationship between one step of the stepper motor and the linear length that a diameter will travel. Once you've set this you've also set your y-axis with an error when you change away from rotary engraving. So you've got to be very very careful here that you don't mess around with these numbers and finish up with a big problem. So I would suggest you don't go down this route. So we'll just cancel that and we'll get out of this and we'll go what I consider to be the safe way of solving this problem. Now I'm going to go through a little bit of maths for a few moments. Nothing too complicated so you know don't run away from this. I don't want to speak down to those people that are obviously very mathematically competent but equally well I need to make sure that those are, that are using this as a hobby machine do understand uh, or will understand the, the simple principles involved behind my method that I'm going to propose to you. As I said there's very little information about this on the internet anywhere that I can find and I've certainly not found anybody that's tackling it in the way that I'm going to show you but just follow me very carefully. Here we've got a picture on the left hand side here of my cardboard tube that we've just cut and it sits on two rollers and there is a third roller behind it. So these are the rollers on the rotary table and this is the stepper motor. Now basically what it says up here is let's assume that all these three or four diameters are all exactly the same so that when the stepper motor rotates one revolution the rollers will rotate one revolution as well and if we basically ignore the fact that the stepper motor may be a different gear ratio to these it has no effect on the results as it stands at the moment so let's just carry on and what I've said is for convenience purposes let's make the rollers a very strange diameter 31.827 millimeters um, but in fact when you multiply that by pi which is 3.142 you get a circumference of 100 millimeters so that when a belt runs around the outside here you know 100 millimeters of motion on that on the circumference of that wheel result in 100 millimeters of motion here 100 millimeters of motion here 100 millimeters of motion here and of course because this wheel is contacting this surface 100 millimeters of motion round here will drive this big diameter round 100 millimeters of linear motion that's what it says here one revolution of the roller will cause the cardboard tube to rotate 100 millimeters and it's regardless of the tube diameter in other words 100 millimeters of rotation on here will always affect 100 millimeter rotation on whatever tube diameter you're sitting in between these or these rollers basically let's put our real world results to the test so when we cut when we cut our cardboard tube with uh, a motive on it which said this is a rotary test we also cut two parallel lines on it and those lines were 150 millimeters apart when we drew them when we measured them we found them to be approximately 162 millimeters there's a magic ratio of 150 divided by 162 which is 0.926 or 92.6 percent this magic number here of 92.6 percent is specifically for this machine but probably for any other machine that's got a similar type of system on it however I'd suggest you do your own simple dimensional checks as you've seen me do here whenever you do stuff for rotary work you would apply 92.6 percent to any y dimension before you output it to a machine file so when you're back onto flat work you don't have to worry about the 92.6 you just carry on working as normal so I have acquired a 50 millimeter diameter tube happens to be a toilet roll which obviously has a circumference of 50 times pi which is 157.1 millimeters circumference so what we'll now do is create a drawing to prove this theory I'm going to draw a horizontal line we're now going to go onto a polyline and I'm going to draw just above this line and then I'm going to come across on a diagonal and then we're going to put a vertical up and stop that short of the center line and now we'll delete this line 
Now we'll put a box around this line and we'll check up here because we want this line between these two lines here and here we want it to finish up at 157.1 which is the circumference of our 50 millimeter diameter so we'll make that correct to start with so that is how we would have drawn it we ne now need to compensate by the magic ratio for the y-axis I know this is in x at the moment we're going to turn it round in a minute if you remember so we're going to go back to this dimension here which is 100% and we're going to change that percentage to 92.6 so there we are we've now compensated for the rotary over travel we will now convert this to a y-axis by rotating that through 90 degrees and we'll save this to a memory stick we just run a track test on it and we'll run the test, here we go I just needed to be a bit more careful with my 150 to 162 ratio and uh, that would have been good that's only about probably half a mil out maybe a mil at the most and that's the difference between the two diameters well although cardboard and candles are not a good mixture it makes quite a nice little uh, tea light cover well I do hope this session has been uh, useful to you guys um, it's certainly been a very demanding session for me because there's been so little information that I can draw on to help me and in fact I've even written away to the uh, to the people that supplied the machine because I couldn't get any sort of rotary motion until I disabled the rotary engraving function um, but uh, basically things are going to slow down now with my learning sessions because we've covered most of the basic things and I've got a, a wife that's getting very jealous she almost considers this as being the other woman and she's got a long list of things for me to do so um, hopefully I'll pick up with you in the not too distant future I've got a few more projects that I want to do and uh, good luck to you all